Hello, how are you? Recently, at the end of 2023, the FBI declassified and released an old document that clearly states that Earth indeed had visitors from another planet, known as Memorandum 6751. It's undeniably an intriguing and, at the same time, controversial document. But what if it's true? Memorandum 6751 is a fascinating document that was legally released to the world by the FBI. Finding it is like searching for a needle in a digital haystack, as it resides in a vast library of thousands of other documents. However, this memorandum is not just another one among the crowd, it shines with its own light, standing out for its unique and distinct nature. What truly sets it apart is its exploration of enigmatic entities that defy human understanding, with the intention of unraveling mysteries that could very well be the key to humanity's future. The documentation was released in 2015 and has been used by researchers of the unknown as evidence that we are aware of the existence of advanced beings. The document states the following. San Diego, California, July 8, 1947. Memorandum of Importance. This memorandum is respectfully addressed to certain scientists of distinction, important astronomical and military authorities, a number of public officials, and specialized publications. The writer has little expectation that anything of importance will be achieved by this gesture. However, it seems a public duty to make it available. The current writer holds several university degrees and was previously head of a university department. The document continues with the following remarks, in the vastness of the cosmos, a situation of great gravity may unfold at any moment involving the mysterious flying disks. If one of these disks is attacked, the aggressor, most likely an aircraft, will almost certainly be annihilated. Such an event could trigger widespread panic and international suspicions. The key data about these ships are now within our reach and must be disclosed, no matter how fantastic and unintelligible they may seem to those unfamiliar with such phenomena. Points to be taken into consideration. Some of these spacecraft are manned, while others are remotely controlled. Their mission is peaceful, and the visitors contemplate the possibility of settling on our planet. These visitors resemble humans but are much larger in size. They originate from their own world. They do not come from a planet as we understand the term but from another world that intersects with ours and is imperceptible to us. The bodies of the visitors, as well as their spacecraft, materialize automatically upon entering the vibrational proportion of our dense matter. The spacecraft possess a type of radiant energy that can easily disintegrate any attacking craft. They can re-enter Earth at will and simply disappear from our sight without leaving a trace. The region from which they come is not the astral plane but corresponds to the lokas or talas for those not familiar with esotericism or Hindu customs, where these terms are more commonly heard. Lokas and talas are metaphysical worlds or localities, a plane of manifestation with some differences between them. In summary, they would be other dimensions. Returning to the document, the ninth consideration is that although they probably cannot be contacted by radio, it is possible that they can be detected by radar if a more suitable detection system can be developed. To conclude the page in question, the following quote is brought, we provide information and warnings and can do nothing more. The newcomers should be treated with all kindness unless the disks are removed from a text drafted with which our culture and science are unable to draft a heavy responsibility falls on those who have authority to understand this matter. On the following page of the same memorandum dated August 8, 1947, there is an account of an interview with a young man identified as Billy Turrentine, who managed to photograph one of these strange objects. He details that afterward, a strange agent decided to visit him. The document follows the account, the photograph in this excerpt is purportedly to represent a flying saucer observed by Billy Turrentine, a student from Norfolk who successfully photographed the object with his small camera. Billy was interviewed on August 8, 1947, by a special agent at that time. Billy informed that the original negative was given by him to a certain Mr. Brown of the Photo Craftsman Company. Billy warned Mr. Brown that he would equally share any profits derived from the use of the negative by commercial enterprises or newspapers. 
However, Billy received no remuneration for the use of this negative. How did Billy manage to capture that image, as he himself said in his interview to the agent? He had read a lot about unidentified objects, especially about the Roswell case, and despite his age, it caught his attention. So, he started sitting on the balcony of his apartment and constantly watching the sky. Until one afternoon in July 1947, Billy observed a large black object moving rapidly through space from the southwest to the northeast. He said that the black object was followed by two smaller objects also moving in the same direction. Billy explained that the objects were moving very fast, much faster than any airplane, and they seemed to be extremely high. Billy couldn't ascertain what those dark objects represented, the only reaction of the boy was to grab his camera, which he said he did in 20 seconds. At that moment, the discs were almost directly over his apartment, and he had to crouch down and look almost perpendicularly to get the photograph, explaining why the balcony railing appears vertically in the photo. Bill emphasized that on the day he took the photograph, the weather was somewhat cloudy. It was only at this moment that Billy could identify the shape and color of the objects. As mentioned earlier, according to information obtained by our team, Walter William Turrentine, Billy, passed away in 2011 at the age of 78 from a heart attack. The negative he negotiated with the photographer at that time ended up being copied several times, and today one or more of these copies can be acquired through eBay. What makes such documents interesting besides the main subject is that there are many of them detailing the same thing, namely strange crafts observed by civilians and military personnel. It is documents like these that lead people to say that we have been studying these cases for almost 100 years, but most of it is kept secret from the public since, if proven, they could completely change the course of our history. On the other hand, the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects has captivated the human imagination for centuries, leading many to believe that these enigmatic objects have been visiting Earth for many, many years. The book of Ezekiel in the Hebrew Bible contains a very interesting account of UFOs. According to scholars, this would have been the first account of an encounter with unidentified flying objects. But, mind you, we are talking about a time long before the birth of Christ, around 593 BCE. Ezekiel described a visionary experience in which he witnessed a wheel within a wheel descending from the sky. The text goes on to describe the appearance of strange beings and the lucid encounter with another world. While interpretations of Ezekiel's vision vary, some researchers argue that his description bears similarities to modern UFO sightings, with the wheel within a wheel possibly representing a flying object similar to a disc. This early account intrigues us even more and reinforces our limited knowledge of world history. As for the authenticity of the photo taken by Billy, it is undeniable. What came into question was whether that object really was something from another world or just a prank by a 14-year-old. And as for the documents, which are not few, that report sightings and even contacts in all degrees with non-human beings, they are gradually being declassified and revealed to us. To those left wondering, what if all of this is true?